All right, everybody, if you could take your seats here, well, you'll start to get uh, started with today's Detroit Mercy Basketball Media Day. So it's a great honor to have everybody here in attendance, all of our fans, all of our media, everyone watching live on the Detroit Mercy Titans Facebook account. This is our first official Facebook Live event, something that the Athletic Communications wants to utilize more in the future, more social media out there. So you'll start seeing a little bit more stuff on Facebook Live, on Instagram Live. So definitely hope that everybody out there can keep, uh, keep in touch with not only with the basketball programs, but all 19 varsity sports. And But we'll start there. Today is a you know, great day, just another stepping stone to the season, 2018-19 uh, men's and women's basketball season here. Uh, games start in about a couple of weeks, and teams have been practicing you know, at, together for a couple of weeks, and just real excitement, a lot, of, uh, a lot of excitement building on here. We all know the um, new coach we have on the men's side and um, in Mike Davis, and obviously the women's side in Bernard Scott, and he, you know, he's been great here. A lot of new faces, uh, a lot of new faces, both programs. First off, I'd like to introduce, uh, standing in the back of the room, our new voice at Titans on 9, 10 a.m., Dan Hasty. He will take over our radio broadcast this year. Very happy to have him. <laughs> voice of the Western Michigan Whitecaps, and he's going to be a great addition to the radio side. Um, you know, a, a young veteran in uh, the Detroit, uh, Detroit area, so he'll be a great addition. Also, as well as Jeremy Otto will be taking over duties on all of our ESPN3 and ESPN Plus uh, broadcast now, so he will take over uh, that duties, pairing with Earl Curitan, you know, a great uh, Detroit Mercy alum. So uh, congratulations to both of those guys and definitely going to help make the season go along. Uh, big congratulations. Danny Kapp will be back for our, our what, ninth, tenth season doing the ESPN3 and uh, Plus broadcast on our women's, uh, women's telecast. We probably have the best women's basketball broadcaster in the Horizon League, in my opinion. I've been in here for 10 years. I think uh, Horizon League Network started about 12 years ago, so I've heard just about everybody out there, and I think Denny uh, is probably the best one out of there. So thank you for coming back another season. It'll be great on the women's side. All right, well, without no further ado here, we will uh, now hear from Detroit Mercy Director of Athletics, Robert D. Valls, and he will uh, let you know about more of what's going on in tight territory here. Good morning. Uh, welcome to Historic Callahan Hall and the 2018-19 Women's Basketball Season Media Day. We're extremely optimistic and excited about the season that's upon us. I've watched both teams at practice and the effort has been fantastic so far. Coach Scott and Coach Davis have high expectations regarding effort on a daily basis. You know, here at Detroit Mercy, we're c c committed to do the right thing. And you know, we all want results, and we all want to make sure that things are done the right way. And sometimes you've got to change that culture. And we've decided to change the culture around here with both Coach Scott and Coach Davis. So, you know, what's inside and outside of our basketball programs, uh, the main focus that we're doing, what both coaches are doing right now, is focusing on the student athlete. And the main focus of the student athlete is to make sure that their experiences are, are, are good here, that, um, they work hard, and at the end of the day, um, they graduate. And so we're all on that point. And speaking of graduation, we have one of the highest graduation rates uh, in the state. Our graduation su success rate is on the verge of 90. Uh, um, so we're extremely happy with what our student athletes are doing. From a, a national uh, perspective, you know, college basketball is, is, is struggling a little bit with some of the legal issues. And uh, I can tell you emphatically, um, here at Detroit Mercy, uh, we do it the right way. So. Please keep that in mind. There are a couple of reminders uh, coming up. Uh, tomorrow night is Hoop Night in the D, and that begins at 6 p.m. Open it up so folks can come out and see uh, our men's women's basketball student athletes and what they've been doing over the last month. November 3rd is an important date for us, uh, and that's a Saturday. It is the City College Series, and there's a double header that day. The women will play Wayne State at 5 p.m. The men play Wayne State at 7.30 p.m. And it's an important day because all proceeds go to the Detroit public schools, um, specifically to the elementary and middle schools. Uh, all proceeds will go, go to their athletic departments to help them with their athletic programs. So please come out. It's, it's an important day. I mean, plus it's a great rivalry with Wayne State, uh, some great games, some great basketball, but then the importance of what we're doing for uh, the Detroit public schools. Um, coming up, 
you know, in, in March, and which, is, which is a focus for us, uh, is the Motor City Madness. And this season, there's a bit of a change because um, only the top eight teams go to the tournament. So that means every regular season game is pivotal and, so, and important. So uh, keep that in mind. The uh, teams that finish in the top four actually get to host a quarterfinal game on campus. So potentially, we could host a quarterfinal game here in Callahan Hall um, and then uh, go down uh, and win and get to the semifinals and finals at the LCA. So quarterfinals on campus, semifinals and finals will be down to LCA. And those dates are March 5 and March 6 uh, on campus and March 11 and 12 at, at the Little Caesars Arena. So please keep those dates in mind also. Um, it's just as far as tickets go, uh, you can talk to um, Stanley Willard and Justin Harrison about tickets for the Wayne State game, but also for the uh, season tickets too. Okay, that's it. Uh, and I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, thank our, our media partners, uh, WADL uh, TV and uh, 910 AM radio. Dave Bangura is here. Appreciate Dave coming out. But uh, thank you for your support and what you do for us. Okay. With that said, um, I'm going to stop talking, and I'm going to bring up uh, Coach Bernard Scott. It's good to be back and getting ready for another season. Um, everyone in our program is really looking forward to getting back on track after a tough season last, last year. Uh, practice is going well. We're, we're seeing a lot of improvement every day, and as a coach, that's, that's exciting. I really, I really like our team. Um, our chemistry is really good, and we're all on the same page with what we're trying to accomplish this season, which is, uh, which is very important. We basically have uh, a brand new team. We have six returners and five newcomers. Um, the six returners are focused and ready for the upcoming season. Uh, four of the returners, um, four of the returners experienced our run to the Horizon League Championship a few years ago. So they know how hard you have to work uh, to be one of the top teams in this league. And they're passing that knowledge on to the other players um, so they can realize how hard you got to work to be a good team in this league. The freshmen are doing well. They know in order for us to have a lot of success this year, we need them to be able to play and be able to play good. So they're working hard um, to make sure they're ready to go. They're going to have their ups and their downs, but they're very talented young ladies, and they're all for winning programs. So uh, I think they're going to be just fine. You guys might have um, seen the polls. They came out today for women's basketball. We were picked ninth. And to be honest with you, if I was on the outside looking in, um, after last season, I probably would have picked us ninth as well. But I'm not on the outside. I'm on the inside, and I had an opportunity every day of seeing how hard our young ladies are working, how hard they are competing against each other and our practice guys. And I can tell you that we're not a ninth place team. Uh, our non-conference schedule will be a good test once again. It will prepare us for the Horizon League, which is always um, very important for me when we're doing our schedule. I want to play a schedule that will prepare us for um, the other teams in our league, and we've done that again. We're going to play uh, five MAC schools, two Big Ten schools, uh, one school from the Missouri Valley, Summit League, and um, Northeast League, so Northeastern League. So uh, it's, a, it's another pretty good schedule. Uh, as Robert mentioned, November 3rd, we're going to have our first game in Callahan Hall against Wayne State, this exhibition game. Um, so it'd be our first time, your first time being able to watch us play, which is exciting for us to get in front of our fans. After that, November 6th, we'll start here in Callahan Hall for the, re for the regular season, and that game will be against uh, Michigan Dearborn to start the season before traveling to Ohio State um, that Thursday to play. Uh, Ohio State on, on Friday. Um, when the games start, we'll be ready to compete. We, we always uh, prepare our team and prepare our players to, to be ready, and we will be ready this year. 
we have won two out of the three years um, I've been here. And I have the same feeling about this year's team as I had about my first two teams here. And those teams were very successful. So I'm looking forward to seeing how these young ladies um, play this year and how we finish up. But just, um, just from the start of it right now, I feel really good. I feel really good about these young ladies. So that's all I have. I want to wish you guys a great day and go Titans. Uh, I'm going to pass it over to Coach Mike Davis from here. Uh, first of all, uh, Earl Curitan is here. And uh, Earl, I go way, way back. He was at my press conference, and I didn't get a chance to really talk about him at all. But uh, we played against each other in Italy. And uh, it was just good to see him. And I know he's doing our radio for us, so I get a chance to see him a lot. And he's part of the history and the tradition of Detroit basketball. And everywhere I go, people talk about Detroit. History of it and how great it was, and I was a big fan back in the day because of all the great players that came here and played and um, the games they won. And so it gives me um, um, a sense of not urgency but a pride and uh, enthusiasm that uh, you need to be a part of this program. And uh, as I talk to my team every day, if you come watch us practice, all about effort, giving great effort. Uh, doing things the right way uh, because that's what the really good teams are doing. And sometimes when you face your opponents in practice, uh, you can lose a sense of what other teams are really doing. And so I've been real, real stickler about our guys working really hard, cutting hard, um, rebounding the basketball at a high level. Uh, and so we want this program if we can get, we may not be able to get it back to where it was, because where it was was really, really good, okay? But we can get close to that and and get this program in the NCAA tournament, competing for championships. Uh, I think the city of Detroit would love that because this is uh, a basketball city. Uh, everywhere you go, uh, you always hear about players from Detroit. And when you look around the country of rosters, there's a lot of players that from Detroit, have had a lot of success at other schools. And um, I know as I talk about well, why you can't keep kids here, but you have to win. You have to win. And when you win at another level, uh, now they have the pride that the alums have in their program. And I just appreciate Robert giving me this opportunity to lead this program and, and, the, and the rich tradition that we have. And I got to tell our players sometimes, you may, you probably won't be the best player to ever play here because it's been some really good players to play here. But the players that played here following our program, I've had calls from uh, a lot of former players uh, about the program and how they feel about the program. And uh, it really gets me excited. Uh, I've never been in a situation where you're excited going to work, but when you're, when you're excited going home after, looking forward to the next day, it tells you where you are and, and how bad you want this program to be successful. We practice. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 3.30. Uh, Saturdays, we kind of change a little bit. We go in the mornings, uh, give them Sunday and Mondays off. So if anyone want to come and watch us practice, you're more than welcome to watch um, our guys work. And, you know, it's my job to instill in them the tradition. I keep saying tradition and, and how great this program has been. It's my job to make sure our guys know that and work every single day uh, to get to that point. And so I'm not sure how you guys ask me questions or uh, how it goes. But again, you know, I'm not going to promise you we're going to win 20 games. But I did tell you it's going to take me two months to turn it around. And, and when you come and watch us practice, our effort is right now is at an eight, and we're trying to get to a 10. And that's what it takes to be a really good basketball team is giving effort and appreciating the technique. And just appreciate wearing this. I'm from Detroit, just appreciate coming to the gym. When, when you cross those lines out there, you cross that red to get you that paint uh, on the floor. It's all about how hard you work. And I'm proud um, of this basketball team right now. And our schedule is supposed to be really, really difficult. But you know where I came from. We played 13 on the road. And um, I try to play as many DCS schools as possible. Uh, next year, I want to try to get, if we can, 
Kentucky, Duke, whoever it may be, to come play us here. Uh, but to do that, you have to put a product on the court that, you know, can compete. And it's all about right now going out recruiting and really getting good players in here. And we may be I'm, – I'm used to getting eight, seven players new. This year we have 13 new guys. And so when I arrived in June, uh, only three guys stayed from last year. But when I arrived in June, I knew it was going to be a challenge to recruit. And we had some really good players that, that wanted to come. But again, you know, we have to win games to get them here. But the 13 guys that are here now, uh, they're giving great effort, giving really, really, really good effort. And again, we're looking forward to uh, November the 3rd to play our first game. I watched the game last year on video uh, with Wayne State last year a couple of days ago. Uh, and Wayne State came in here and gave a great effort and won the basketball game. But uh, my focus is March. We, we want to be a really good basketball team in March. That's what we want to be. Win, lose, or draw in November and December and January and February is good and fine. But uh, anything that – any success that we have, we're going to ignore it. And any failure that we have early is not going to dictate who we're going to be in March. And so come March, we want to be rolling and, and playing really good basketball. So you have any questions for me? Now that's the time. I see I'm overdressed, <laughs> you know, but uh, – I'm a basketball coach, and uh, I love wearing basketball. I love wearing – I wear Detroit every single day. You know, I went to the Pistons game last night, and I walked into my Detroit gear, and I felt like we was playing, you know. So uh, when you see me, this is what you see all the time. Well, the schedule was made before I got here. And to be honest with you, I really don't like exhibition games. But we're playing for a cause. You know, we're playing for all the, the public schools here. And so uh, when I play, I like to play for real. And so this is an exhibition game, which we would do every year just for the inner city schools to raise money. Um, I like to play the best competition you can play. You know, if you follow my history all the way back to Indiana, when I was in Indiana, we were the number one toughest schedule in the country. So. Uh, I like to play tough opponents. It's all about effort. It's all about effort. No one has a significant place on my team. Uh, it's all about who come to practice every single day and give everything they have to the program. I watch film every night. Um, I may watch one practice six times before we practice again. And so as watching it six times, uh, if you want to stand out to me, stand out doing the things that we worked on and talked about. And so every guy on this program knows that you're only going to get on the court. And I'm, I'm only going to play eight to nine guys, and we have 16. So I'm only going to play eight to nine. So if you want to be in that top eight, we have a top eight every day. And we, I tell our guys we have a top eight. If you want to get in that top eight, a conversation won't get you there. You know, assistant coach won't get you there. Because my eyes is on the practice tape, and, and that's how we're going to judge guys. I have my assistant coaches every single day um, to write, to give me their top eight. And I, want, I want them to see who we're working with and who's working. And then when they give me a name that I feel like that's not giving me what I want, I ask them, why do you give me that name? Because we're not going to be friendships here. You know, Detroit basketball want to put a team on the court that's going to really, really play. They may love your name, but they're going to love your effort more than anything at the end of the day. I do, and, and, and there are pictures up on the, uh, uh, in the arena. But when you talk to players about former players and how rich it is, they don't understand it. They don't understand it. Uh, but it's my job as a coach to make sure that they, I can get them close to understanding how. I mean, when I, when I walk around, you know, I, I was walking to the game last night and the guy said, hey, coach, get that program back. You know, you feel that. You feel that. And uh, the players, uh, they give great effort. They give great effort. And then once you invest 
then you understand why the former people that had success, why they were successful. Not because of that talent level, because mm -hmm. they was talented, but they put a great effort into this this program as well. And so I talked to them about the former players, but I also talked to them about the effort that they gave while they was here. And the pride and the love they have for the school. You know. I call it the swag effect. You know, when you're coaching the swag, you're going to always have six, seven new players every year. And so uh, um, I never left campus recruiting. Uh, when I was at Texas Southern, you always on the phone. And, you know, they said it's a small world. So when I got here, I got here in June. You couldn't leave campus to recruit. And uh, so I was so used to working the phones, watching videos, and working the phones, watching videos, talking to people that we were able to sign 10 players without ever leaving the campus now. You'll be the judge how good they are, you know, once we start playing. But that was a challenge. That was a challenge. But it wasn't a real challenge for me because I've been that coach and recruit that way for the last six years. Now, if I'd have come from another program where we always out, uh, spending a lot of money recruiting, um, then it would have been a challenge. But for me, I embraced it because for the last six years, that's, that's, that's how I recruited from my office. And I was the only guy here uh, up until like two months ago. I was the only coach here, no secretary, no assistant coaches. And that was great for me again because, you know, when you uh, work in a situation where I was, I was at Indiana UAB, and then I was at Texas Southern. But when you're at Texas Southern, you got to really work. Like you got to work. People say grind, you have to really grind. It's not a fake grind. And so uh, to be able to sign 10 players, and we also got. Uh, two players, uh, I cheated on one of them because one was my son, that had been somewhere else, assigned somewhere else to come here for free. Well, it's not for free, I'm paying for him. But uh, to get those two guys without giving them a scholarship uh, really helped our cause. You know? The swag effect is that you have to do everything. You have to be the coach, secretary, preacher, lawyer, doctor, you know, whatever it may be, that's, that's, that's what, whatever hat you have to wear, you have to wear that hat. And, um, you know, you don't have the budget to go out and recruit the way most schools do. And you're really wasting your time and sweat going out recruiting because uh, everybody's going to look at these schools first before they look at you. And so, as I said, when I got here, uh, only three guys stayed. But to have to sign 10 from your office, uh, it, 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 it's, it's, it's a challenge but it wasn't really a big one for me. It's just like I was scared, I look at my schedule and, and I see some really good teams on there. No disrespect, not one team on our schedule. But I'm used to seeing Syracuse, Ohio State, Arizona, you know, those teams. And it comes to the eyes all in a row and all on the road. So uh, we may not win in a non-conference game, but at least I'm sleeping better because I know that those games before was a really big challenge. But you have to, want to challenge to be a good basketball team. How much of an influence did uh, Tech players like Earl or Willie Green and others have in getting kids to stay home and not leave the state? Because I know with recruiting, you can make the big switch. Because I know previous coaches in recent years mm -hmm. haven't recruited heavily in the city. And it seems like if you're able to, you can also recruit your family. Well, again, you know, when, when Earl and those guys stayed, you know, they stayed because they had the pride for the city and they, and they knew that they had put together a group of guys that they can go national and, and play. Uh, time has changed a little bit because from that period when they had success, there's been a lot of failure in between there and kids are impressionable. I mean, every three or four years, uh, kids uh, is all about what their friends think about their decision. And when you're dealing with that situation where it really affects you or you really care about what somebody think about your decision, then uh, we're not there right now. We're not there right now. And the only way we can get there is to win basketball games. And I'm just talking about having 20 wins because a lot of teams can schedule for 20 wins. I don't schedule for 20 wins. You know, I schedule for the NCAA tournament uh, because it's a special feeling to be sitting in that room on Sunday and your name come across that screen, and no matter if you're 16 seed or 15 seed, it's still a special sense of pride. 
So what we have to do is, and it only takes one year, one or two years, because I, I hear people all the time talk about how great Michael Jordan was. He wasn't even born when he was playing. You know, he probably never watched him on video. Uh, so there's a lot of great players, but they're here, they're here, they're here. And uh, what you do is you win one good year, you have one really good player, two really good players, and they do something really special, and you become the talk of the of the city, you become the talk of the state, and then all of a sudden I want to be like that guy. I want to be like that guy. And so I guess it was a lot of guys that during that time, uh, they wanted to be the Earl Carey, the John Long, the Terry Tyler, you know, Durod, those guys. They wanted to be those guys. And so we have to put a guy on the floor that they want to be like and say, well, I want to be this guy. You know, and so uh, if we can do that, get recruiting, uh, then we can start the tradition of, of recruiting local guys and local guys to come here, I think. I think. That's it. Three questions. I got dressed up for three. <laughs> now, again, thank you very much. Anytime you guys want to come watch practice, you're more than welcome. Thank you. Like I said, that will conclude the formal press conferences. Number one, Coach Davis, never ever tell a PR guy I cheated to start a sentence. <laughs> That, 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 wasn't, that wasn't good for any of us. <laughs> so we also all want to know who won the game, you or Earl? Who, what team won? You remember? Earl was the best team in that So, <laughs> so that will conclude our formal press conferences now. We invite everybody to come down to the court. Players are available. The coaches will still be available for about another 45 minutes. I know a lot of the players uh, do have some 2 o'clock classes they got to get to. So. But uh, everybody will move down to the court now for the formal. If you want to do one-on-ones with the coaches, uh, just please let us know. And once again, thanks, everybody, for coming out today. Thanks, everybody, for watching live on Facebook Live.